We're uh, a l well, we missed a few of the picks and bands, but uh, we're we're here now. Um, well, what what are, what are your thoughts? EG's new roster, EG's new lineup. It's the lineup that I kept saying <laughs> I knew for days. No, it's right here now. Did you know Fog no. was on the team though? Yeah, of course. I got the, I got the hint like when he stopped playing with Dignitas. I'm like, well, he's not played the most recent matches. What? Why would this happen? And I'm like, ah, he's joining EG. Jump bolt. He's jump bolt. You know. That's a good ball to jump off from. Alright. Well, uh, let me quickly just make sure that your Skype volume is actually okay. This is looking super shoddy. There you go. You're a bit louder, Lumi. That, uh, 24,000 production value. This is, uh, R.I.P. Kawa. Uh, he's, he's gone missing. We've filed a police report. We don't know where he is, so, uh... Is he actually missing, or is he just asleep? No, he's not asleep. Uh, he's, he's actually missing. I've... Sent out search parties. I've. When was the last seen? Let me, let me, you know. Put the pieces together. Ask him hard hitting um, questions right now. I last saw him yesterday afternoon. Okay. It was. Is he okay? Like, is he in back in the accident? No, no, he's he's okay. He, I I assume he's actually I think, um, just stuck in traffic. So unfortunately, stuck uh, in traffic. Yeah. So, what you're trying to say is he met up with. A girl or a bloke. Cute, cute Asian girl. Oh, oh yeah, or cute Asian guy. Yeah. Which is not me. Uh, and, uh, you know, things happen. Well, so he, we may never see him again. He broke okay. their heart. Okay. Or, well, his or her heart. And, uh, Fair enough. Well, if we never see Kaur again, um, we apologize. We to are his looking parents, for to his a, family. Uh, Job positions open. Beyond the summit, yeah. uh, send your applications uh, if you want to be uh, our, our new producer. We've moved on. Kawa's Kawa's gone. Um, BTS you get to, at pay, you get to be paid uh, a healthy sum to not show up or show up late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, the, the 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 kicker is we actually killed him off, so uh, we don't have to pay pay him. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but we've got DTS 2010 here up against new EG Ross. We're almost done with this draft, Lumi. We haven't uh, talked too much about the draft. Uh, there's not really a lot to talk about. I mean, there's there's no. heroes and heroes we've seen before. Yeah. More heroes we've seen before. How, how good do you think this EG's lineup's going to be? Uh, do they have what it takes to, I, I guess, start by? Do you think they'll be the best NA, NA team? Um, that's going to be Liquid. That's going to be Liquid. Although Liquid's not really NA anymore because they yeah. got some, some European injected into him. So. Seconds. You know, uh, I actually think that EG shows a lot of promise. This is a roster that Fear handpicked for himself. This is not like, oh, you know, um, from management says, let's just try to get these players. They're good for the, I don't know, um, streaming. Shit. Put lights yeah. on. <laughs> this Sorry, is, this is... Jared showed up. He's alive. I, okay. First thing I told him was to fix shit. So let's hopefully, uh, we'll have some overlays in just a second. We'll have uh, hashtag production value returning. Yeah. Or, uh, we'll be good to go in a second, I, I think. This is a this is a roster that uh, Demon handpicked for himself. I don't think he got all of the players. I think he wanted Brax, for example, or maybe Korok. But uh, you know, you can't you can't get everything you want. But I Can guess I? This Korok's is a free closest. agent right now. Korok is free agent. I thought well, he was safe from Ding Team Dignitas. Kind of on Dignitas. I mean, I don't. I feel like Dignitas right now is just. I mean, Fog was on Dignitas. Right. If Korok wanted to join, I'm sure they could get Korok. Well, I guess they don't want Korok then. Yeah, either they don't want Korok or Korok didn't want them, so... I'm, I'm sure it's one or more than the other, but uh, we'll see. All right. I well. won't say which. I don't know which one. I'm, I'm... I don't know either. Uh, the way Korok was playing in the Dignitas' recent matches uh, was not quite up to his normal standards. Dignitas is currently 0-4, so... Yeah, it was not, yeah. Maybe in a bit of a slump here. But uh, we're going to talk about this team here. It's Team Evil Geniuses. It's a new lineup. We'll have to see if it's the same old EG throws. I have my hopes that they're going to make some big things happen. The rest of this year, as well as next year, they'll be attending MLG Columbus. They'll hopefully be attending, like, DreamHack Winter later on in the year. And, well, let's introduce them. EG are going to be sporting Fear on the Visage. J.O. Still on the roster playing the Weaver. The new player, MSS Mojo Storms are going to be playing the Solar Mid Dragonite. We're going to have Fogged, the former Dignitas support player. Was playing mid and offlane for a while. Is also going to be playing support once again with EG. He's on Jakira. And then finally, in the offlane, it's going to be Universe playing Darkseer. Yeah, Fog Dota could definitely play some support. And if you guys did not catch Effie Matt's blog, new blog post up today, it says the mo probably one of the most uh, important component 
of what a top tier team is a top tier team is the support duo. So if you're obviously if you're experienced in the game, being known to play things like offline, solo, mid, and carry before and now, going back to the support and trying to uh, kind of direct his team to to victory. And of course, Fog, a very veteran support, TI3, you know, was able to do okay there. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have DTS 2010. We have Tossy playing the Rubik up top, uh, Arts, RZ, RZQ on Chen. We have Sima the Slayer on the uh, Life Sealer. In the jungle, or on the bot lane, we have Nature's Prophet being played by CA. Last but not least, we're going to see Timbersaw solo mid being handled by Undershock. All right, well, I, I guess a big shout out. Uh, this is a new new EG roster. A uh, big uh, shout out goes to the players who are no longer on this team, uh, especially Demon, who's been on this EG roster for so long and produced so many amazing moments, and uh, BDS as well as Bambo, who are no longer part of the team. But the tides are changing, and EG, well, we're going to see. What about Boba from TI2? Dude, they, those guys have already. Uh, those, who those laned against are, Ferrari, remember that? Those, that's like well in the past. I mean, Universe was actually on that team, correct? But when he got. He got well, he left the team with Bulba. I think so. Yeah. So, Universe has uh, gone full circle back on this EG roster. And EG, well, they're going to be running a safe lane trial lane up against the uh, off lane Prophet. And they're just trying to stop these trains from getting in to block this pool. But I don't think they're going to be too successful. There's just too many of them. This one yeah. here. Well, actually, if you oh. kill them off, that would be not too bad, actually. There's still one left. I, I, he may have summoned it at the wrong time. Cause is, is this going to expire? Oh. Okay, oh. no, he didn't. This is fine. Yo, this is so next level. You don't give away the go even. Holy crap. Yeah. Except it... You missed the Master Bush block, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, the way... When you when, when you summon those first trains, you want to summon them right at 30... 31 seconds, so that they they last just long enough to, to block this pull. That's, okay, uh... Okay, so... I, I think the player that most uh, most viewers are least familiar with is EGMSS, who's playing Dragonite in solo mid. Yeah. He stood in for Team Liquid before as a Rubik. And the many times I stood in here for Team Liquid as a Rubik before in 2013, um, was able to steal RP and then use the RP against them. And to be honest, carry Team Liquid uh, a couple of times when he was playing standing. So definitely a very skilled, kind of uh, up and coming, talented North American North American player. I thought he was going to be playing support, but seems like he is good enough to play solo mid at the highest level. So I'll be looking towards him uh, to see how well he plays. Yep. Well, uh, C8, the bottom lane, Nature's Prophet, successfully blocks the next uh, one-minute pull as well. He's also going to pull off, pull some creep, so one Treant blocks the creep on, then the other one's going to pull a creep wave here, which is really nicely played by him. Wants to summon some more Treants soon and try and block the two-minute pull. Looks like he's not going to go into the jungle. Oh! I'm surprised that Fog didn't dual breath that. It's definitely worth, worth dual breath to kill it quickly and hopefully drag a creep aggro back, but maybe he thought, hey, creep yeah. aggro's not going to go anywhere anyways, except towards the enemy tower, so it's not worth the mana. More tree and they, being grave chilled. <laughs> well, they are going to dual away. breath that one, except the other one just yeah. ran by, and you can see that these two supports are sitting close to level one and oh. going nowhere. He didn't make it in time. Oh. The body block oh. combined with the grave chill was just enough to, to get this to, to, uh, to spawn, and with this pull, this means they can just double pull it, pull it, pull it to the centaurs, and if they still have a creep wave, pull it over to these wildkins. This is a oh, no, this helps them not, so much. Not if this Trian is left alone. This Trian's being micro. He's gonna go towards the creep wave, tr at least trying to destroy the creep wave room a little yeah. bit here. This is gonna help EG a lot. Just having this oh, one neutral form. CA is in some deep doo doo right now. Oh yeah, this is just Jakiro and Weaver here. They're gonna TP out. I like this play from him. There's no ice path because it's level one Jakiro. All right. I think it's yeah. right to go for the dual breath level one. It has much better damage output, and the slow means you get more right clicks off. But it means until level two, it gets a lot harder to stop that teleport. And even when you have one level one ice path, he just starts recasting it after the ice path. I think this is one of the rarest cases in Dota where you get go your level one spell not against a hero in the lane, but against a summon of the hero in the lane, which is the Treens. Dual breath a lot more damaging yeah. output, and of course disables them longer for your right clicks between two. Uh, a lot of the early game meta game is really about whether you could kill those treants or not. That they are very, very annoying, as we can see here. Yep. Well, uh, if he's got one pull off, he'll pull it on through, and this will help get him some levels as well as experience. Uh, no, nothing really happening as far as teams getting aggressive just yet. Until now, we've seen a smoke coming out from the DTS 2010 supports. They've got Chen, they've got Rubik, and they're on the move, looking to go through the enemy jungle here. And it looks like they're actually going to try to swing around and get mid here. They want to get Mojo Storms out. They're not worried about the EG tri lane. They're worried more about mid lane and getting their Timbersaw off to a good quick start. Ooh, Dragonite poking head. He thinks he's okay right now, but here comes a telekinesis lift from the back line. It's gonna be a lift, it's gonna be a stomp, and a whirling death on top. Oh, no, stomp no misses, stomp. I think. Yep. It looks like the pure damage of the Tessa Faith yep. of Battle Lock. That shit, check it out how much damage he did. 
<laughs> he was more than dead. The Centaur getting stunned by the Dragon Tail actually, I mean, it was a nice little play there. Could have kept him alive a bit longer, but ultimately there was enough damage that they, they could have killed him regardless. And Smart gank from DTS 2010. I definitely think it's the best here to gank. Because if you go bottom, you're not killing Weaver. Maybe you kill some of the supports, but ultimately it's not going to matter. You're not going to help your profit out too much. Profit's like, I just want to go jungle. So that's definitely the best here on the map to be ganking early on for a chat. We don't just use that care. Uh... The damage minimum for Tesla Faith is 100, the damage maximum is 200, and he dealt 104. Wow, so uh, that was disappointing some... Tesla Faith. But they got the kill. I love, I love that you can use combat logs or stuff like that. Yeah, that's really nice. Valve is uh, delivering. Cool I wish there was like a hotkey where you could kind of see the... Like for example, you don't really care how much damage you're dealing to creeps, I guess, most of the time. Yeah. But you do care about... Right clicks and min max damage and yeah, like an easy like not having to go in the combat log to find all. That. I guess you just have to wait of filtering it all. It's kind of like when your hero dies, like the individual player when in your in your in a game, you can click what did damage you. If casters could somehow find out how much damage each right, thing but did, even in that screen, it doesn't tell you min max damage. Well, actually, it, I, for I test of faith, they'll say did X amount of damage, and it only yeah, get yeah. it only gets used once, I guess. If there was two test of faith in that time, maybe it'd be different, but. Well, actually, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about the skill bow here for Timbersaw in the mid lane. A lot of times you see two levels of reactive armor, yeah. but uh, Undershock here can actually go into more Rolling Death, simply because, well, Dragon is not going to physically harass him too much, and Rolling Death as a way to deal with physical melee carries is extremely impressive. And MSS, you know, even before the gank, he was having a little bit of trouble dealing with the continuous harass, but with that said, he's still doing okay in terms of the CS chart. Bottle Crawling is uh, pretty impressive here. Yeah, it's not going to slow down his farm too much. It more than anything just helps the Timbersaur a bit. And he didn't even get the, the last hit for the kill. That went to the Chen. So we'll see fast Arcane Boots up on Chen as well as a fast level 5. So I definitely look towards DTS 2010 taking the two fast towers in this top safe lane. If no one's going to defend it, they get two. If someone is defending it, they should still at least get one tower out of that one. But it looks like for the time being, they're happy with life still free farming. But I, I expect them to go for a push fairly soon. Yeah, the one thing that they have to be somewhat careful about is that EG is actually okay in defending against the push. There's not really any true punishing of a hero to punish, for example, Dragonite getting surged in to initiate, or even Darkstar surging himself in to initiate. You don't really have a legit stuns. Like, you have open wounds, that's not really going to do anything. They, you need something like a telekinesis lift, which they do have, but they don't have enough, in my opinion, follow up damage yeah. to actually kill that Dragonite or Darkstar. So, I think if EG senses a push coming, they could just basically say, all right, we'll group us five, we'll charge in, and we'll team fight them with things like. Vacuum, Jakiro, Dragonite. Probably so I feel like keeping EG is involved in this push though. So there is four heroes pushing. Yeah, uh, they're not going to defend this one. There's, this is more of a mid game, mid game plan to defend. But Jakiro is in position right now to drop an off Ice Path to at yeah. least pull some of the creeps off the tower. Yeah, pull, it looks like all of the creeps, although the Treants as well as cent the uh, Centaur still there. They'll get one tower at least. Something worthy of noting, which uh, Jo's done on his Weaver, he's already picked up the TP scroll. And this is a hero who, every time we see Weaver, the most effective ones are ones that come to the fights early when they break out. And this is where you see the fast TP scroll on him. And he's going to come out, come maybe if there's a, they go for this T2 top tower, that's where we see EG look to mount their defense. Even yeah. DK has a TP scroll, so multiple TPs on the EG side. The DK with a TP scroll is a lot more dangerous uh, than, I, than the... Weaver one, and I'm, I'm I'm surprised that I think Weaver's pretty dangerous. He can chase down anyone, and you don't have the lockdown to actually stop him from chasing you if you're. That's DTS. definitely true. Yeah, and they don't have detect. You don't plan to have detection this early yeah. either, and that's uh, part of why Weaver TPing so dangerous. So, uh, although you know, with that said, they're gonna continue pressuring on the bot lane. JL's been keeping the ring of Basilius on, but now that the the creep is under the tower, I think uh, CA is gonna get himself a little bit more experience to work with. Yep, uh, CA's uh, got the level 3 trains now as well to help. He needs to draw this creep equilibrium off the tower. He can't let Geo just do as much damage as he'd like to this. Geo going to just Shikuchi in, try to get some trains. Actually, he takes some tower damage unnecessarily. But uh, either way, this T1 tower at bottom, it looks like EG may be going for a bit of a counter push of their own. Question is, does it get taken down now, or do we look to a, towards uh, Geo just backing off, not laying it down, get down to deny range? It looks like he's going to back off for the time being. Yeah, well, you don't have too many summons or, you know, kind of big explosive AoEs under a tower. Yeah. They could just glyph. Force a couple of TPs, and you suddenly need to get out of there. So, a very good defense here coming from DTS. They're healthily leading about twenty, uh, about two D twenty five hundred gold. Yep. I'm not sure what number I was trying to mutter through, but twenty five hundred gold is the the goal that they're leading by. This is what EG like. They're not going to be too worried about this. They're kind of, I guess, expecting this. They're more sort of focused around the mid game, looking at the dark sea team fighting DK, not the strongest in lane. They did have a really strong trial lane, but it was just against it was against an empty lane or just the solo lone pro the prophet who was playing so defensively. So I don't think they're expecting to get too many kills. But now they've got some levels in farm. 
level 5 on the Jakira, Visage approaching that level 6, they'll definitely start looking to force some towers and fights of their own, because they can take towers somewhat with the DK ultimate. Yeah, the DK ultimate is probably the best spell. I think their kind of best line of offense early on was something like surging a Dragonite in, he ults and stuns somebody, put an Iron Shell, and then, you, you know, lead to a kill, but... You can't really do that against Timbersaw, and Timbersaw, kind of the the cock blocker of anything that EG wants to do, and so far they're kind of just sustaining damage all over the place. That said though, J.O. does get one tower on his own right, if you don't have enough lockdown against Hero, he gets to do whatever he wants, and so far it's lasting very well on the bot lane, and also applying a ton of pressure. Alright, well, it's, it's it's been one kill in 10 minutes, but I have a feeling that's about to change. There's a smoke gate going on mid lane, and definitely look towards Weaver TPing in, and oh, multiple heroes TPing right in. Here. Oh, Fog's gonna get caught out before he even casts the spell. DK gonna get Dragon Tail done. Can they kill off Fog? He does get an Ice Path, but it's not really enough. Mojo Storm's about taking a lot of damage. Here's Jay, who's gonna go on the Chen, it looks like. Chen, though, has Mech in hand of God. This fast Mech is gonna wreak havoc. And they're keeping the Timbersaur alive. He's gonna bring down Mojo Storm, sir. He's used to Mech, he's used to Hand of God, and Jayo now going to be forced back, it looks like. He's got no mana for a time lapse as well. He's trying to finish off the chain. It looks like Gemini Attack will do so. Jayo stays alive. Fear now gonna look to turn things around. He's got no mana for a Soul Assumption, and, well... The fast mech, the fast hand of God. EG lucky to get one kill there, and here's an infest nature's prophet TP onto Universe. More TPs coming in. It's Fog. He's respawned already. This fight just lasting for too long. Seema the Slayer with a fast arm that wants to bring down Universe. Won't do oh. so. Great ice path from Fog, and Seema the Slayer getting chain stunned by familiars. Brought down. EG turn it around. That fight should not have gone their way, considering the items that DTS just picked up, but it sure as hell did. I think that was a mistake to make the TP at the end. They got so much already, able to pick off a couple of heroes. In fact, if they wanted to pressure the tier two tower or tier one tower at the bot lane, or if they want to farm a little bit more, that would have been a lot better. But instead, they actually TP into a tier one tower where the support of the radiant team was responding yeah. thanks to the very low level dev time, and they were able to kind of turn things around. So I feel like DTS 2010 got a good start, but they kind had, of threw away the advantage. They had some of the biggest 10 minute items you'll ever see on a team. A Chen with a 10 minute mech, Lifesteal with phased armlet at 10 minutes, and Timbersaw with Arcane Boots point booster being tanky as hell, and they... He just got the point booster after the Okay, mech. so he yeah. just had the Arcane Boots. I think regardless... It's really it's really just the mech and then the Hand of God, which yeah. is, you know, really good enough. I have to really commend the Chen's play on the Hand of God. A lot of players were just like, oh my god, my team is getting nuked down, let me yep. use Hand of God as soon as possible. The way that he used it was such that Timbersaw dropped down to like 100 or 200 health, and then he used it. The nature about Timbersaw's uh, hero is that, oh, he's low hero, let's try to chase him and focus him down. But he, he's very similar to Bristleback in that matter. We'll talk oh, about it later. Yeah. Understruck, yeah. really in trouble on the middle lane. Can he get out of chain? No, he cannot. So Assumption is able to uh, finish him off. Yeah. The nature about Timbersaw's hero is that he, he baits you into chasing him. And the longer you bait him into chasing you, he gets to mo use more timber chains, more shock room, and he does a ton of damage. So using the Hand of God and Mech when he was low HP is a lot more effective than using it when he is at half health because you induce more chases against your Timber Soul. Yeah, I think the big thing there is they also didn't have like a proper answer for the Weaver. They don't have if they want to kill him, they have to time it so they use the telekinesis as Timbersaw and Lifestyle are kind of focusing on him with like a whirling death and chakram, which they didn't really do. It was such a scrappy fight and they'd already used so many spells on other heroes that Weaver, even with no mana for a time lapse and sitting on a couple hundred HP, couldn't be killed off and he managed to bring down just the Chen, and from there the fight went downhill. But we're going to see things now continue in the middle lane. EG, they've got oh. a tower. Timbersaw just blows up Fogged. He did not stand a chance there. Yeah, you know, we're talking about DTS 2010 lacking in terms of really good lockdown. EG's not, you know, they don't have too much of their own. So they see Undershot coming in. They can't really do too much except watch. So that's going to be a continue. They have got, like, one of the best, the, uh, in my opinion, one of the best single target stuns in the game. In Dragonite, the, in the yeah. That's, that's all they got, though. Meanwhile, back in the top lane here, seeing huge trouble. He's going to try to TP out. Hand of God comes in. Make sure that he does get a TP out. Time last backward here for J.O., but Universe perhaps a little bit trouble. We're going to see open wound. We don't have search. Now we do. Universe get the hell out of there, and he should be fine. Yep. Well, uh... Maybe we do have profit teleportation. Uh, or, no, he... he does TP's seconds. Universe going to just get out of yeah. here. <laughs> Timbersaw, if he comes in a little bit sooner with a Whirling Death Chakram, could maybe go to the kill. This is a level 11 Timbersaw, by the way. So, uh, all things considered for DTS 2010, while there was a kind of EG favored fight in the middle lane, they've still got some really strong levels here. Gold Graph is back to even now. Chen just going to pick up some casual boots, and uh, EG now have a mech of their own on the darks here. So, their team fight suddenly looks a lot stronger and a lot scarier. I really like the item choice coming out from Fear here. You can see that he's actually opting for the point booster instead of the arcane boots. Arcane boots generally a very standard choice on Visage, but against this particular team where they try to burst you down with things like Timbersaw, Life Slayer, it's really, really important to have the extra HP. So he's gone for the point booster first. Obviously going to upgrade into Axe Scepter when he gets a chance to, but I yeah. think in this case a lot better than a, a energy booster.
Yeah, I think apart from the Dragonite, this team doesn't have too many mana problems in general anyways. It's just the Dragonite who maybe will want uh, at least one arc in between the team. But Dragonite, he's doing okay. He's just going to be sort of more the frontline tanks, I guess, and just needs to make sure he has mana to use as many stuns as possible. With with Bottle, with Magic Wand, he can sort of do that. He's got a giant neutral stack yeah. here. Not going to stack uh, he, it again. I, I don't think you can get much more than this triple stack. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more difficult to stack with a, a melee hero, and you know, yes. he unfortunately didn't get the stack off, so... I mean, regardless, he's going to just clear it up once he gets level 11 and get himself a ton more gold and experience to boot. Ancients being stacked as well. Uh, they've only been stacked the one time, but this is more just investments. I mean, I saw Fear stacking this neutral camp a couple of times. It looks like the, just whenever you're nearby a camp and it's about to be uh, the respawn time, if you can stack it, you do just that. We see DTS 2010 haven't done much of their own as, as far as stacking goes. So EG, once they can clear these, they're going to be looking like they've got a big advantage in. Well, for the time being, they're not worried about killing off these neutral stacks. They want to go for a smoke gang. It looks like they're headed up top to at least get a T1 tower. And they, I feel like they can just take a couple of towers here. They're so strong right now with Visage at, at sort of his pinnacle as far as having the level 4 soul assumption against fairly squishy supports. And just even Timbersaw on the front lines, 1500 HP, 3 or 4 soul assumption, and he's dead. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, sure, Timbersaw is going to be able to tank a lot, and you do have a Chen, and that always is... Kind of throws a monkey wrench into your plans, but if you nuke down the Chen also, that's that's not a bad way to go about it. They're getting a head start in terms of this kind of push versus push war. And yeah, I think DTS 2010 is going to try to push the tier 1 tower, but they're going to lose tier 2 because all Dragon I needs to do is pop his ultimate, and that tier, their tier 2 tower is going to be going down quick. Yep. Uh, they don't have the Doxy with them for the time being. He was just picking up a TP score, it looks like, from the side tower, but both teams going for a push of their own. Timbersaw actually is going to TP back to the tier 3, so... DTS 2010, maybe want to make a defense on this tier 2 tower. They're going to throw a Life Stealer ultimate, the Chakram, but it's too late. They shouldn't be looking to TP to this, I don't think, and they're not going to do so. No Glyph is up. They're just going to TP to the tier 3s, knowing that they don't want EG to apply any further pressure to them, and no possibility for a trade at bottom. So EG uh, getting some more headway as far as increasing their lead, and uh, going to get aggressive now, placing a ward on the high ground at this top lane. Yeah, the best that uh, DTS 2010 can make of it is to just farm the enemy jungle. Oh, they find a huge stack, and if they could steal this oh, nice. one... I think this is... I mean, it's, draw everybody here. It's like 300-ish three, gold. 350, maybe. 350 swing, right? That's like around 700 gold destruction. That's like getting a courier kill. If you want to, you know, yeah, it's, mathematically compare it like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think courier kill, I mean, math, at 60 minutes in the game, isn't like a, a huge gold swing. But it, it definitely is a, a ni any nice boost, boost you can get. So we will see DTS 2010 take that. And that, it is just going to it is gonna slow down EG MSS farms because he wants to get that fast BKB up because he's the one hero on this EG side who is somewhat behind because of the early ganks on him. You know what's the worst thing comparing to not getting a stack? It's expecting yourself to get the stack and then going there to find yes. out, oh, it's not here anymore. That human psychology is fucked up, so... Well, MSS is going to cry a little bit. And if something DTS 2010 can do if they push out these lanes, they probably want to try to bring down this T1 tower first, is go for Roshan. They've got Chen Nature's Prophet. They have got a life seal for some DPS as well. So I think we should be looking towards DTS 2010, trying to find a nice timing where they can take Roshan without having to worry about EG coming, swooping in and taking a fight. At the same time, you are taking a Roshan fight against familiar like a Scout Yeah, Swarm that's you know kind of difficult to navigate against. And more importantly, a Darkseer that could really make you look yeah. silly in a Roshan. It's more of so. the, they, they want to try to take Roshan without there being a fight, though. Is what is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you, you can do. Of, you can. You have Nature's Prophet, which is one of the best heroes to kind of maneuver the enemy team around, uh, according to your will. Looks like we have a Darkshore Warlord running in. Uh, Ice Path's going to fly. We're not going to hit too much. Yeah. EG's going to try their best to make this defense, and, you know, They're that, that should be the end of it. I really don't think DTS uh, could make a push. Yeah, it really seems they just can't break through EG right now. Jay has almost finished off his Lincoln Sphere on the Weaver. Uh, MSS is just tanky enough on the front lines. They've got Familiars just causing problems. And there's so much just spam and AoE nukes coming out from EG that DTS 2010 having problems just fighting into them. And it looks like they're just going to take their time, fall back. We almost have a Bloodstone up on Undershock's Timbersaw. So looking around a 19-minute Bloodstone is uh, pretty damn good for a Timbersaw. Yeah, Bloodstone is a really you know, nice core item on Timbersaw. But in this game, I feel like something like Shiva's Guard would do a little bit better. Um, I think a Bloodstone's pipe I think you need I a pipe would, yeah. for your team. I mean, anything that makes your team a little bit more tankier. Sure, you know, the that item makes himself tankier, but damn, yes. you need to help out our team a little bit, I think. Yep. Well, uh, we'll look towards EG, just uh, doing some farm of their own. It looks like they did scout out their neutral stack had been stolen. It's going to be a little bit demoralizing. They still got this uh, ancient stack, which has now been uh, stacked even further. Looking at a, a triple stack here, maybe even a quad stack. As uh, this is some farm for the DK, like you say, once he, he has hit level 11 now, although it's still hard to kill on his own because his damage output isn't that impressive. Yeah, he's uh, being able to jungle quite a bit, uh, kind of very actively stacking from his team. 
And very actively going to the jungle, using his Thrive Brief whenever he can. Jo's getting some decent amount of farm as well. He's going to have his Lincoln Sphere finish. And then Desolator is going to come you know, soon after. I feel like going into the late game, EG is very well positioned against DTS 2010. As a kind of hero-based matchup, Dragonite does okay against uh, Lifestealer. Whenever he is not in range, you could be sure that the Dragon Tail will be finding you and the Focus Fire will ensue. Keep in mind that Desolator is going to be up on Jo, such that Minus Armor will actually shred through uh, Lifestealer quite a bit. So... I like the fact that he's going for Basher, it allows him to be a lot more effective yep. in the front lines, but at the same time, it means that once his rage is over, he either need to get the hell out of there or he's going to be dead. Well, EG ahead by a little bit here. It feels like they've got a pretty solid hold on this. What did DTS 2010 need to do, like, moving forward for the next five minutes or so, do you feel, to uh, get at least claw their way back in? Yeah, I think with Dragonite not having a Shadow Blade and really the lack of, kind of, long-range stuns coming out from EG, your Prophet could do a, a ton of split pushing. He's got 3,000 gold right now, which I assume is going to go into a Shadow Blade. As soon as you have the Shadow Blade, I think you actively look to split push and, and split the map open. And that's that's going to allow you to perhaps uh, go into the Roshan Pit and start something there. And I, I really don't think they could actually actively do a frontal push, uh, provided they have things like Surge yeah. DK, Sun Initiation, Surge Vacuum Initiation. So. I think DTS 2010 just have to avoid fights and try to get what they can in terms of the map advantage. I think it's really important they try to get this T1 mid tower some way or another, even if it's by nature's profit back during, because this is giving EG like such a good advantage point on the map. They can easily come in to contest Roshan. If they're, even when there's profit split pushing, if they have a feeling that two, three DTS heroes are split pushing, they can TP to this mid tower and get there fast after defending the split push. And on top of that, EG just sort of can just back each other up so fast and get to anywhere on the map so fast from this mid T1 tower point. So. I think they need to find a way to bring it down, even if it's through split pushing or Nature's Prophet backdooring. They need to get rid of this T1 mid tower. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they can though. You could well. backdoor a little bit, and then it'll go down to 300 HP maybe, and then he has to. <laughs> well, bit and by then bit, he has and to try that twice. That. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if they win a team fight, then they yeah. just roll over that tower. So. Well, EG are going for this big ancient stack of theirs. Uh, it looks like MSS, with the help of Fear, is going to look to bring it down. Fear has gone for more points in the Grave Jewel, just the one in the Gravekeeper's Cloak. Um, at least getting the one point in the Gravekeeper's. We've seen Visages go just no points in Gravekeeper's, but do you feel this is like the becoming like a more common way to play Visage? Cause, or is this something that you should... Do you think there should be more points in the Gravekeeper's? Actually, I thought this was... Uh, you know, a while back, this was kind of the more traditional build, where you kind of focus a little bit more on your uh, nuking power, so maxing Soul Assumption, obviously, and then taking up Grave Chill to help you slow yeah. more. And then it, it became a trend of support trying to get tankier. You know, we have support like Naga Siren, Visage, and if you look at AI2000 that plays this hero, he really likes to um, basically take up Grave Secret Cloak as much as he can, yes. and then he often leave Grave Chill at level 1. So it doesn't I think, scale very well. It's just, well, it's one extra second of duration, so... Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... You mean Grave Chill doesn't scale that well? Yeah, Grave Chill. It, it doesn't, but it, in certain matchup, it's really good. For example, against a Lone Druid bear, like you yes. grave shield a bear, the bear just stands there like an idiot. Um, it depends, I, I guess, what target you're looking at, because right now the only the physical damage is coming from Life Stealer, who can rage off the Gravekeeper's Club. Right, but you know, at the same time, it's it's like one of those scenarios saying, "Oh, all right, BKB blocks a ton of items or blocks a ton of spells." Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't mean BKB makes you invulnerable. It just means that once BKB's down, you're fucked. Right. So it's the same thing here. Once the rage is over, Dragonite stun, Grave. Grave Chill and all that stuff is gonna just go right on the life sealer. So, again, I, I think Seema the Slayer has has to, you know, carry the load of his entire team, and more importantly, he has to do it when EG has a big red target on him. Well, we're gonna the one sort of uh, I guess way for DTS to get back in this game we haven't talked about is the life sealer infest bombs, which he just infested into the timber soul for some time, didn't actually find anything with it, but. Uh, it's sort of a one way that EG can be caught up by surprise, and they want to try and bring down targets like these squishy support, like squishier supports, the Jakiro, the Visage. They want to bring these heroes down first because they offer a ton of disable and damage output, and they're much easier to kill than heroes like Dragonite and Darkseer. So definitely look towards Timbersaw and Life Sealer trying to just jump on the backlines on those two supports. All right, so we have DTS kind of maneuver himself on the bot lane trying to do a push, but Jo's up top here pressuring the tier three tower because he doesn't need to be there. And I really think the four members of EG could be able to defend this. Look at this ice path, dual breath, mech coming up, and everything is dead. Even the centaur creep are really in trouble. I really think that DTS needs to back off here because the tier three is under siege up top. Yeah, great play by Fear. They're just chaining those familiar stuns and doing a lot of damage, and they're going to be forced back here. Weaver, just uh, it's the split push is coming from EG, not from DTS 2010, and uh, it's coming from in the form of this Weaver because there's just no lockdown to taxi kill him. They can't go and gank him. He's got this Lincoln Spheres, so the telekinesis gets blocked, and then after that, what stuns do you actually have? 
Yeah, there is nothing uh, until until Prophet picks yeah. up something, and the looks hex. like he's actually gonna skip oh. the Shadow Blade and go straight for a uh, hex. We even may just get a kill straight up here on Tossie. We're not going to see a TP out in time. EG Geo just with plenty of damage there. And I think Weaver's going to end up being a bigger problem than the Nature's Prophet. You talk about Nature's Prophet split push, but Geo as a split pusher and just as a much stronger carry hero has no real answer to him right now. Yeah, I mean, Nature's Prophet is not really building split pushing item right here. He's yep. going for a more team fight oriented. I really like what Geo did there. He Sakuchi in for the extra damage, and then he used a swarm immediately, fully knowing the fact that, you know, once Rubik steals your Sakuchi, he's getting the hell out of there. So, uh, the last spell that Rubik stole was Swarm because Jail made him still Swarm. So, it was kind of good awareness from him and got him to get solo kill very nicely done. Yeah, that's, we haven't actually seen the Shikuchi. Have we seen it get stolen all game long? No, no. He's got Lincoln Sphere now, so it's yeah. going to be a lot more difficult to get that spell. All right. Well, uh, Undershock now. He's got his Bloodstone. He'll be looking towards his next item. And yeah, he needs to be tanking. He needs something of just keeping alive. So. I think either like BKB or, or Pipe, depending on which way he wants to go, whether he wants to help his team out with all the magic nukes, um, just stuff like Dragonite, Flame Breath, Vacuums, there's so much AoE damage here, or just go to help himself stay alive, which is going to come in the form of a BKB. Oh, BKB is uh, already online. You think he's going to go back for the Shadow Play? I think that's a good item, yes. although probably Assault Caress mm -hmm. is... Uh... It depends on how. Decisions. EG, I think having a, a great initiator like a DK could offer them a lot here. So I think Shadow Blade would be really nice. But at the same time, if they think they're just going to be looking to to five man push, a Soul Crest is the better item. Okay. I would I would personally say the Shadow Blade, but I think it comes down a lot to uh, EG, depending on what EG's playstyle is. Yeah, is. I mean, I think MSS looking like the fact that he just want to play with this team quite a bit, and I think Surge somewhat replaces the Shadow Blade in that regard. Yeah. Although you, you might want to save your Surge defensively against the Life Stealer. Oh. Nice. Lysler just one chop these birds up on the Ancients, and looks like Fear lost to him, unfortunately. I mean, this live is actually looking pretty big. I think perhaps DTS want to hit some item timing. Once they get a Abyssal Blade finish on the Stealer, that should finish around the same time that your Scythe of Ice is finished. He's and looking, then you just go for something. He's looking pretty big, but this was a 10, 10 minute armlet we have to remember. So he's, in 14 minutes, all he's found is a, a Basher. And, uh, well, 2,000 gold on top of that, but I feel like he could have the Abyssal about now if he'd spent more time farming. But he tried to come to fights. He's not been involved in a single kill at all. He's 0, 1, and 0, and he's actually been coming to fights. If he'd been continued farming, he'd have an Abyssal Blade by now. Well, I mean, the kill score is 5 to 4, so we can't fault him too much. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not faulting. I think he's tried to come to kills. He just hasn't found them. Most of the time, he's been infested in someone. Like, the big incident at mid lane where he was infested in Nature's Prophet and ended up going down was really slowed down his farm. And that's where EG, one fight at... What, 10 minutes into the game has put them ahead. I think if they lose that fight, it's DTS 2010 who are ahead and controlling this game. Oh yeah, that tier 1 would probably be dead already, and yep. then the tier 2 will be a half HP if not dead, so... It's, you know, it's it's hard to say that one mistake uh, from a single player doesn't have any significant impact, because it really does, so... DTS is farming away. You can see that Timber Saw, generally your frontline tanker. He's afraid. He's actually gotten a, a Gold Scepter, which... I think it's the correct item choice here, because okay. Dragonite and Desolator coming in soon from the Weaver is going to shred him apart. And to be completely honest, he still can't do as much damage as he wants. Once he is torn soon. apart by the, the Soul Assumptions, though. You probably yeah. have Scepter. Soul Assumptions I mean, come, come flying your way. <laughs> not, I, they'll come flying your way regardless, let me tell you that. Yeah, uh, It just hurts a little bit more now, which nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Well, for, for DTS 2010, uh, they're... They're gonna be a pickle. Lumi, we, we we're casting Sina Cup. We was like, "Where's our Chinese Dota?" It's now, it's now it's right showing here. its face. Yes, it's showing its face. DTS. I'm happy. I'm, we're in our element now. <laughs> Except, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Jo's got his Cessilator finish. It's gonna be delivered to him. There's a Cipher Vice. So Cipher Vice on Nature Tropic, especially if it's a first item, can be considered as a split pushing item. A part of split pushing is you know be able to push the lanes without getting killed. The other part about split pushing is being able to kind of split off from your team and pick off enemies so that they're afraid to defend against you. And Cypher Vice gives you that. So, especially with the fact that you could teleport uh, with the Life Slur inside of you, you could definitely set something up. But for now, DTS, Smoke does 5, and J.O., he runs into an enemy to 5. Got a time lapse. He does, and he's out of there. Well, now they know it's up. Timber's all going to timber chain's way, and they can bring down Fear nice and fast here. The Great Chill's there. Life Seal's still chasing Fear. He gets a first hit bash. It looks like Fear going to go down the sides. Meanwhile, MSS has gone on the Timber Saw. Fear does eventually go down, but the Timber Saw gets brought down to pieces. Vacuum is there on top of a wall, and EG just tearing apart DTS 2010. The Chen Hill's not enough. Seema the Slayer gets brought down in an ice path, and the Triple Familiars providing so much lockdown, so much sun. EG are on the chase here. Tossie, 
he's got Shikuchi. I was about to say, he's not going to TP out of this one, but it looks like EG may just go into the Roshan pit. The Desolator up on Geo. He does too much damage. If they had a Sentry Ward or a Gem down when, when uh, they got detected by Geo, they maybe kill him because a Telekinesis plus an Instant Hex and Geo goes down and that fight goes completely differently. Man, DT just needs to get out of that tier 1 tower because every time they take oh. a fight there, they just get melted. Be that that spot is just so bad to take a fight against a Darkstar and a Jakira. The AoE is so great from them. And uh, I gotta just say, the inclusion of the Dignitas player universe as well as Fog. Playing some of their most signature and best heroes is, is showing there because Ice Path hit like four heroes, Universe Wall and Vacuum hit like three or four as well, and that was all she wrote. I'm not sure exactly why you want to take a fight there. DS, DTS did, and they got punished very hard. Who's going to come out? It looks like DTS 2010 going to force EG back. EG not going to stay around too much longer with uh, certain ultimates on cooldown, the DK ulti form, the Dark Seat, no wall of replica for 25 seconds, but. Tossy, he's searching around trying to find a pick up, not going to find anything here. And there's a Shiva's Guard up on this dark. So there's a ton of items on EG. And all of a sudden, their gold lead is just skyrocketed. They're looking at about an 8,000 gold lead over DTS 2010. Yeah, Shiva's Guard is also really, really good against the damage output of DTS. I mean, you're already relying solely on your life to do the damage. And, you know, Prophet's going to right click some, Chen perhaps is going to right click some, Shiva's going to just says, no, your support uh -huh. right clicks just EG, do not no. matter anymore. EG, no, they're already swinging towards this Roshan pit. It looks like Visage Familiars just straight up killed a Chen. Yeah, Visage Familiars killed a Chen here, and I don't think DTS are going to get Roshan in time. I think they're in a ton of trouble here. Familiars are there. One stun, two stun, the third stun coming in, and Undershot gets Chain Stun brought down here. Great micro coming out from Fear. Nothing wrong with these old man's hands, and Roshan now going to take a fall. Yeah, this game is... This game is done. Dunzo. Alright, well, uh, Age is picked up by J.O. Immediate smoke gets used as well. It looks like J.O. was just planning on going top regardless, and... Can he just... No, he cancelled it. Okay, he cancelled it. They're gonna go down the middle lane. They've got Aegis, they've got Cheese. Surge onto the Dragon Knight. You talked about what do you go for, and the Surge is gonna mean he doesn't need a Shadow Blade. Not gonna find anyone with a pick-off here, but it looks like they're just gonna go for the tower, go for these Raxes, and force DTS to either defend or just tap out. Yeah, I mean, Croft is gonna try to trade Tier 2 to get something going, but... Man, that tower is going down so quickly. I think and, they can uh, just straight throw right going here down. if they want, but yeah. if, I think EG's gonna play a lot safer. Yeah, they're gonna just back off. Alright, Dax is chasing. He can just get Hex and see the Nature's Prophet TP out of this one. And yeah, we'll, ha we'll have that happen. It's a long... Okay, never mind. Yeah, nothing nothing you can do to cancel that. And uh, Universe is gonna find the creep wave. And EG, I think, just look look towards another lane. It looks like they're gonna hang around top here. Jo and, and Jakiro still near this top lane, so should be maybe pushing up there. Fear is actually at bottom. He's picked up a Ghost Scepter. He's got a ton of farm as a support hero. And making some big plays happen. Yeah, and uh, and I think EG really, there's no hurry for them to do anything else. MSS, by the way, is like five, six hundred go away from finishing that AC, and that's really gonna help them to siege the high ground if they even need help on that regard. He's got it right now, so that's gonna be a big item pickup. Darkstar is up to twenty five hundred go. If you want to go straight blink dagger here, that will be the initiation that they need if they want to do it, or if they want to keep slow sieging, that's gonna be fine as well. Fog's up to another fifteen hundred. He can pick up Arcane Boot for that Dragon Knight if he wants. There's just so much more gold coming out from uh, EG that they could just, you know, hang tight, yeah. play slow, and... 8,000 turns to 13,000 now, and uh, EG are just cruising all of a sudden. And this game was very much in the balance. I feel like DTS 2010, like, one better early game fight, I mean, we talked about already that mid-fight, but it was so close for them to start snowballing. And this is with a life stealer who has now been involved in one kill, but if he got a bit more involved and just found, a, I guess, a better sort of, had a better teammate to invest in to get into these fights, things would be going very different right now. I mean, if you look at the goal graph, it really speaks a tale, right? They've been, even for quite a long time, EG slowly climbing up, and then that one team fight mid, and you can see the goal graph just, like, spiked upwards. So. Even well, though, even, you could tell EG were just getting a bit more, because it was slightly sloping upwards. Uh, EG just getting being a bit more efficient with their farm, with their time movement around well, the map. That's at the same time when Prophet was farming for his Hex, so without a Hex, Prophet isn't a threat. Uh, whereas he becomes more of a threat yeah. when he does have the Hex. So it's hard, really hard to say if, let's say you just farm for 100 more minutes, what would happen. But yeah, EG was definitely getting a little bit hurt, because their supports could farm better too. Oh, uh, CA at mid lane. He's caught out. He tried to do the Hex on Universe and TP out, but... uh He's gonna go to the tower. Hey, it gets denied. Well... I, nope. EG may not even, oh, let's say, EG don't want it, EG they can just, just leave it leave there. The tower. Yeah. I've, I've been in situations where I'm like, don't deny this mid-tier on tower, it's, it's better to keep it alive. <laughs> Maybe not against a Nature's Prophet, because once he's back, he can TP in and backdoor it, but against like non-Nature's Prophet lineups, leaving a T1 mid-tower in deny range without sure. killing it is often worth it. You meet a D-War coming out here from the DTS uh, base, making sure that they are not seen, but Jay on the front line, like, he does not care. Yeah. Which, 
because he really does them. He's going to have a top. butterfly soon. Jeez. Nature's probably going to be forced to buy out here, so that's going to slow any item progression of his, but it looks like we're going to see a second set of Raxes before taking a fall here. Undershot going to get stunned up. There's plenty of damage on oh. here. Vacuum wall. Oh. Universe with the Blink Dagger. And Cena with the Slayer, the Life Stealer. There's nothing he can do to stay alive in the front lines. GG going to be called. EG. They're looking strong. He wasn't even close. Yeah. J.O. just going to uh, <laughs> gonna go looking and into some fountain kills here. Gotta, gotta pad that stats. First match of the year, man. Yeah, this is EG's first match since TI3 qualifiers. Yeah. They have gotta not... pad those stats. J.O. says, give me that kill. I got the Aegis, no prop. He needs to get nope. that off. No go. Well, EG takes a convincing victory. Yeah, I, I, fairly convincing. I, I, don't, I don't think e, I think EG played perfectly throughout the game, but I think DTS twenty ten showed that they're actually a, a really strong team. They came through the qualifiers as a last minute replacement for Flipside Gaming and Group B, and well, while they're in a bit of trouble here against EG in game one, I think looking towards game two, they definitely showed that they can maybe contest EG here. Yeah, I think they did really well in their early game, uh, smoking MSS on the mid lane, and they were able to kind of take things in, in control. It's just their team fight decision making was a little bit suspect because two team fights at the under the tier one tower where TG could easily teleport there just really really punish them. Yeah, uh, we'll actually take a look at Group B, see where things stand. And we didn't do it at the beginning of the broadcast. Uh, Kawa's returned. He's actually alive. We'd we gotta uh, put Kawa, give, give Kawa a mic and be like, "Well, where were you at?" <laughs> <laughs> he's he's made it here. He's okay. Empire, looking at Group B, we've had Group A conclude conclude. Kaipi seven and one. Mouse Quantic flip side, the new team, uh, who we don't really know what to call them, at 6 and 2. Those two teams advance, but over in Group B, it's Empire undefeated. EG now pick up their first win. Dignitas, they've been the biggest disappointments here in Group B. They're currently seeing 0 and 4. And, well, we'll see. I'm, I'm looking forward to Empire versus EG. That's going to be a hell of a series. Yeah, I made a tweet about that matchup. I thought it was today, but it's like <laughs> two days from now. So Good for EG. They have time to prepare. and Well, I say time to repair as if they need it. Sure, they're a new team, but this team's been screaming they for... They they've been screaming for a good month or so, though. At least with different players. Like I don't think uh, this lineup was finalized until maybe a few days ago, but they've been trying out various players. Um, obviously, Brax was rumored to be joining, so I think they'll maybe scream with him for some of the games, but... Um, they've been practicing for a while, so I don't think they're rusty by any means. Oh, no, I'm not trying to say that. I'm trying to say that Empire is really good, which yeah. they, they definitely are. So that's something that they have to be extremely concerned about. But before that, they still have to kind of go through DTS, which is going to be trying to take one game off EG. All right. Well, guys, we're going to take a quick break. Game 2 is going to be coming up now. DTS 2010, the wildcard team here in Group B, going to be going up against Evil Geniuses. Stay tuned.